ladies and gentlemen. Will and I have decided to bring something quite difficult to the House, and we appreciate your consideration in this. What I'm going to do uh, to follow on from what Will has talked about is deal with some issues around family, around socialisation, and around why we think enabling a child to stay with their family for as long as possible is a positive thing. But what we want to take issue with are a number of things that have been raised. And first and foremost is this idea that the parent are always going to be the primary caregiver. One of the problems with mental illness of this nature is that the parents reach the age of 70 or 80 and they die. And their children are 40 or 50 or 60 and are mentally still 4, 5 or 6. Ultimately, the parents are not going to be the caregiver. And sometimes we have to consider what is best for the future care options of that child. If somebody remains physically an infant, not only is it easier to find other people to care for them, ladies and gentlemen, you widen the pool of people able to look after somebody who is physically small and who is mentally undeveloped than you do somebody who is mentally undeveloped and physically large. We think there are more options there, ladies and gentlemen, we think that's a good thing. A few other things we take issue with. We did point out that this was a discretionary tool. And in response to something we heard about parents being unable to relate to their child if they don't continue to grow up. Well, we say two things to that. We say that discretion means that if the parents are so mad that they're not able to relate to their child, if it remains a child, ladies and gentlemen, that may be grounds for discretion. But we actually dispute that. And what we think is that when somebody is mentally a child, it is easier for parents or anybody else to relate to them when they remain physically a child than it is to relate to somebody who is physically an adult. We think that it is fine that the parents retain a 60-year relationship with a child they love, can understand, and can care for, than a 60-year relationship with an adult who they cannot, ladies and gentlemen. So we think that all of those things are important. We think that the concession about the fact that he would use a cure is important for two reasons. We think, one, it concedes the fact that we should be allowed to change people when it is for their own good in this circumstance. And we think, more importantly, that when Will pointed out that there were a series of credible, practical, psychological reasons for doing this, and none of those were engaged with, this case stands. So, let's move on and talk about family and talk about care. So what we think is that there are a number of things that remaining physically a child enables somebody to do. And a lot of this is about how long it enables them to stay with the family. So there are some simple practical things like it's much easier to move a child around, you don't need a specialised bed. It's much easier to find a gate for the top of your stairs if your child happens to be slightly mobile than it is to restrain a fully grown adult. But we think it goes further than that. We think it's easier to find respite care. We think it is easier to find external support to care for somebody who does not have these physical problems. Not just yet, thank you. So we think that because of that, you remove a significant burden of stress and strain on the family. Not only the innate resentment that Will talked about that develops, but also the practicalities of can we face another week of looking after this person who is entirely dependent on us for 24 hours a day. And giving parents and families the choice and the option and the ability to continue to care for this person whom they brought into the world and who they love, we think is inherently positive. We also think, as I've mentioned, that it's much easier to find somebody to carry out future care. I'll take Emily in a moment. We think that under those circumstances, it is far preferable that we deal with all of the physical and all of the psychological burdens that our proposition eliminates and allows a family to stay together. Ms. Ravenscroft. Thank you. Um, but when you provide a band-aid solution, don't you basically disincentivize society from solving the real issue at hand, which is the fact that these people are discriminated against, often can't find long-term care if they look like adults? Right, ladies and gentlemen, we think that this proposition is in no way mutually exclusive to dealing with those things. But what we say is that under certain circumstances, this is simply the best solution for a specific set of people in need of a form of treatment. This is the best treatment for certain people under these conditions, and it should be given to them because it improves their standard of life. We think that this comes into an issue about parental choice and parental care. It's all sorts of things like, we are willing to carry out treatments against the will of parents, even when there may be significant detrimental costs. I mean, the example might be leukaemia treatment, for example. A lot of parents automatically respond negatively towards certain treatments that their children may require and then move around. But we carry out treatments which have permanent and irreversible changes imposed upon them. Leukaemia is not always an irreversible treatment, ladies and gentlemen, but things like bone density and growth stunting are things which people naturally react to. We think that parents in this case are not always the best decision makers, and this is something that I'd like to move on to briefly now. 
What we think is that choice making when you are a parent is not only about what you know and expect and what you learn and <laughs> discuss, it is also about positive associations which you have with your own past experience. So what we see is that parents' positive past experience are about them growing up. It's about them anticipating that that was a positive process for them, that new opportunities came about and new decisions and new worlds were open to them. We don't think that under these circumstances, parents are able to have the understanding that that option is never there for that child, and that is why we think we should stand in. The last point I'd like to bring in is socialisation, no thank you, and social stigma. Because there are some instances where these children eventually end up, as Will pointed out, necessary to be restrained when a parent is not in the room with them permanently, strapped in a wheelchair and moved around because they can't be trusted to be left out, and one of the problems is that they increasingly develop physically, the parents age, and the parents are no longer capable of physically caring for them or restraining them. What we see under our proposition is that when you can keep somebody physically young, what you are actually able to do is give them a reasonable level of practical social interaction. Be that with other people around them who can relate to them as a child, or sometimes in the best possible circumstances, that is with other children who are of that age. What we say is that people develop meaningful relationships with peer groups they relate to, whether that is a peer group of the same age, so children have friends who are children, teenagers friends who are teenagers, and adults friends who are adults. What we say is that the proposition facilitates the best possible social expression and social connection for these individuals, who will never be able to have any form of a relationship in the body of a 40-year-old with the mind of a 6-year-old. We give them that possibility, ladies and gentlemen, and we think that is incredibly powerful. So. Fundamentally, what have we told you on this side of the house? We believe that there is a real problem in terms of the lives that certain people live when they have disorders that means that they cannot mentally develop. We think a lot of the physical, psychological, practical and health issues are attendant on their body ageing when their mind does not, and it is the mismatch between those two which we deal with. Families are not usually able to cope. Even when families can cope, the physical harm or to that child and the psychological trauma can in no way be fully mitigated. We give the best possible option to these young people, to their families, and we are very proud to stand on this side of the house.